All right. Well, thanks uh, everybody for joining us tonight uh, for this Zoom video conference with Tyshawn. Uh, I'm Rob Anderson, the Creighton SID. I'll moderate this. Uh, you guys should all have the ability to record. Uh, just click on the record button at the bottom of the screen if you need to do that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have Tyshawn kind of make an opening statement and then I'll call on you one by one to, uh, to ask questions. And, um, you know, if everybody else, if everybody's ready, uh, Tyshawn, why don't you just take it away? Tell us about your decision. All right, well, um, <clears throat> as far as I know that I've uh, made the decision to enter the 2020 uh, NBA draft, uh, I felt like this year uh, as not personally to myself, but as a team that we stood out the, probably the best I've ever been playing college basketball with the group of guys that I've uh, played with this year. Our team really, really helped. Well, we really brought a lot of energy on and off the court. We bond together. We did everything together as a team. And I think those guys will help me put me in the position where I'm in right now. So um, right now, like as far as I know, I put my name in the draft and uh, I'm just every day right now, I'm just staying on the court, uh, making sure my body's right, keep being in shape. So whenever all this Corona stuff can die down, uh, I can be ready for whatever workouts comes my way. All right, we'll, uh, we'll start. We'll take some questions. Uh, Rex Smith, I see you first on the participant list. Well, we'll start with you, Rex, if you've got any questions. Okay, uh, Tyshawn, uh, just talk about um, what went into this decision. And, you know, if, if this is it for you at Creighton, how hard it is to walk away from this team, especially with the way it ended and kind of that sense of unfinished business going into next year. Uh, well, so me and uh, Coach Mack had a great discussion. We talked about uh, – uh, put my name in the draft and um, me and him we just really he I love coach Mac to death and he, he's one of my mentors being at school and um, he felt like this year I could possibly be ready and uh, as of right now like I've I'm up and down to whether or not if I want to come back to school so um, as far as next year like I understand like we have a top five team uh, it'd be fun to come back and play with the group of guys that I have right now. We can potentially make a big run in March Madness, make a big run during um, the Big East tournament. We can have a successful year. So it'll be extremely hard leaving my guys, and it'll hurt a lot because, like, I love everybody on the team. And, yeah, that's about it. All right, T Tim Kruger with Blue Jay Banner. Why don't you go next? Hi, hey, Sean. What have you heard from uh... – scouts and so forth about where you think possibly that you could be drafted and what level? Uh, as of right now, uh, they, uh, I got my evaluation sheet back and they pretty much just said I can be between either somewhere in the middle of second round, or late second round, or potentially on draft. Andy Kennedy, Channel 7. Hey, Tyshawn, can you do me a favor? Can you hit your interior light? Might yeah. give me a little more light. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. Hey, if you get drafted where where uh, the evaluation says you would, is that enough? If you go in the mid to late second round, is that enough? Do you have a line of what you have to be drafted to leave? Uh, as of uh, right now, if I potentially get drafted, like I, even if it's in the second round, like I'm still going to work my hardest to uh, try to – get some minutes on whatever team that I'm drafted to because uh, it's always been a dream come true to play in the NBA. So whenever I need to uh, – whenever I get drafted and whenever I need to have the opportunity to step up, like I'm going to do that. So um, being drafted in the second round, like it's not really a big deal for me. But if you don't get drafted, would that change? Like if you don't get drafted, does that mean you're coming back? Or if you do get drafted, that means you're leaving? You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, as far as right now, I don't know, like, whether or not if I can come back if I don't get drafted or not. But uh, it all depends on if I sign with the right agent that's uh, certified. And if, like, if I potentially, if I sign with a non-certified agent, then, like, I'm going to have to stay. But if I sign with a, a certified agent, then it's kind of, it's going to probably be around a 70, 30 percent chance of me coming back. Just to clarify, I believe that Tyshawn's deadline, I think, is June 3rd, um, which is well so, before the draft starts. Just so, mm -hmm. okay. okay. Just, just, just so you guys all know. Sure Again, that, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure on that. Next, so you, we'll, you, uh, Jamal Horton with uh, Concord, North Carolina Independent. Uh, 
Can you hear me, Tasha? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Um, I just wanted you to talk a little bit about your journey beginning at Concord High School and, you know, seeing your, your development all the way through to now being a pr prospective uh, NBA player. Well, the journey of being at Concord, North Carolina, well, I, I was really uh, originally went to Concord for, I think, about four to five years, starting in sixth grade, left my ninth grade year to go join Oak Hill, my 10th grade year. Uh, but being at Concord, it was it was a big I, – I loved it. Like, it was a blessing being at the school, playing with a great group of guys that we had, and credits to our coach, uh, George Walker. He's been my coach ever since I was young. And uh, he's really helped me with my game ever since I um, started at North Carolina. He pushed me – I mean, Concord. He pushed me every single day during practice, and he – Really, he's an outstanding coach. And being at North Carolina, especially with uh, amazing principal that we have, Ms. Carla Black, she – I went down to her office almost every day, did my homework, and then ended up having to stay, probably being in the gym, getting more shots up. And it was just – I really enjoyed my time being at Concord my ninth grade year. Have you continued to interact with people from uh, Concord? Oh, yes. I still have a bunch of friends down in, in Concord. I, I even have, like, one of my best friends that I've been – friends with ever since elementary well yeah ever since elementary in the sixth grade uh and he me and him talk on a regular basic and uh, i still got a lot of relationships with a bunch of group of guys down and group of guys and girls down there i'm sorry who was the best friend you referred to uh his name is asa hill you know what's his last name uh he's french so i might mess this up it's like well okay. we, i think gotcha gotcha all right. Okay. Next, we'll go to uh, John Neatow with the Omaha World Herald. Uh, all right. Took me a while to unmute. Tyshawn, appreciate you uh, hopping on here. I just want to clarify. So at this point, you're you are leaning that you're staying in the draft, right? Like I know you haven't made your final decision, but if you had to make a statement on that, you're kind of leaning that you want to stay in. Yeah, I'm more leaning on staying in the draft as of right now. Gotcha. And then. But no, nah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to ask, do you know, are, are, do you have an expectation at this moment of what you want to hear that can solidify that decision for you one way or the other? Are you, have you thought, thought that through or are you just going to kind of take it as it comes over the next couple uh, of weeks, months? Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I was pretty much just going to take it as it comes. I haven't really thought about it as much. Uh, as of right now, the only thing I'm thinking about right now is finishing school and always just staying in the gym and working on my craft, getting my body right, uh, lifting weights, and basically my mind is just focused on basketball at the moment. Gotcha. All right, next up we'll do uh, Jake Russo, K KCAU out of, C out of Sioux City. Hey, Ty, Sean. Um, I know you kind of touched on this already, but, you know, what What would be, I guess, the something you would hear from a scout that would make you rethink and say, you know, I I'm going to go back to school, or something the scout might tell you that, you know, just make you dive in a little bit further into this decision? Well, uh, kind of between of uh, saying like what uh, I need to develop in my game, especially if I need to spend another year as my as a senior. Uh, the only like big problem is is like I'm going to be 22 years old, and if they find like a, a younger cat that can pretty much do the exact same stuff that I can do, then it's it's going to be harder for me because I'm so old, and like it's going to be easier for him because he's young, but. Uh, I haven't really thought about that as much. So uh, I honestly don't know. All right. We'll go to uh, Matt DeMarinas with White and Blue Review up next. What's that, Sean? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Uh, thanks for hopping on with us, by the way. I imagine you're pretty, like, busy chilling out and everything. Oh, I just got done being in the gym. It's all good. <laughs> um, oh, Ty Shaw, we they, lost your video. There we go. You good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Uh, there, there was a report that came out today that said the NBA is looking into pushing their draft back to August 1st, and that kind of runs up pretty close to, you know, first day of fall classes, obviously. If they do implement that, does that change your deadline at all in terms of when you would make a decision? Uh, honestly, uh, I don't know. Uh, I haven't really thought about that, and I honestly haven't even really been paying attention to it. But, like, like I've been talking to my parents, I've been talking to my mentor Jeff, and uh, he—they're both basically just telling me just keep your mind and your focus on finishing school year out, 
and just always just staying in the gym and getting better because um, we don't know whether this coronavirus could die down and um, may or may not have a uh, have to go work out with a team. So they just always just told me to stay in the gym. Don't worry about nothing. Just keep getting better and better. Just pushing yourself and just being ready at, for the moment. All right, John Bishop, we'll do you up next. John's with uh, 1620 The Zone in Omaha. Tyshawn, two parts. Number one, how are you? How are your family? I mean, is everyone doing okay through all of this? Yeah, everybody's doing good right now. They're, everybody's, uh, my mom, my grandmother, and uh, my dad is out working, but my mom, my grandmother uh, is basically just staying in the house. My mom is doing a lot of online stuff. So that's, everybody's just staying in and trying to not leave the house at all. Second part, then, uh, you know, obviously you've seen other teammates go to, you know, foreign leagues. Uh, if, if for some reason the NBA draft doesn't work out, you don't get drafted high enough or whatever, it is, is going overseas, even in the uncertainty of the coronavirus, is that an option for you that you would do, similar to what um, Martin did last year? Uh, I honestly didn't think about it. Like, I was hoping uh, if I could get a two-way contract, then I may uh, try to do it that way. But if I don't get a two-way, then maybe probably the overseas deal could probably work even better. All right, next we'll go to uh, John Fanta with the Big East Digital Network. Hi, Ty, Sean, thanks for taking the time here tonight. Um, how much do you think that where you're at as a player and the kind of development you made defensively in your junior season that you have maxed out as a player at Creighton? Uh, I don't think I maxed out to to uh, just like to be honest. Uh, I think uh, I have another step in my game where I know I can get better. Uh, and uh, obviously, I made a big jump from my freshman year, and my sophomore year, and especially my junior year, especially defensively. And like I, I feel like I can keep making jumps. The amount of times I can get older, I can get stronger, I can get faster, and like I can just get better overall. What makes you think that now is the time that you're best positioned for those jumps to potentially come in the NBA? Uh, because uh, planning, like, that's just going to be my main focus. That's going to be my job. So I have to put everything, my mindset, and everything inside playing the game of basketball. And day and night, I always got to think of being in the gym, putting up more extra shots, uh, making sure my body is healthy, uh, doing a little – rehab sessions, getting stronger, doing all the little things where I know and probably in like a couple years, two to three years of being in the league, like I know I'll be ready for the spotlight. I'll be ready overall. And like, I just feel like uh, if I would go on, uh, if I had a chance to play in the NBA right now, like I will uh, work my hardest every single day because I, I, I want to get better no matter what. Can you give us a sense of, of when um... – these conversations started to happen uh, on potentially entering your name, if it was something that, that was going on or, or popped in your head in February, March, or something that here in the last two, three weeks has really hit you and you've, you've gotten the wheels rolling with this process? Uh, I haven't really uh, even had my mindset when I was playing basketball down in Creighton. I was worried about just trying to win games and making sure that we were – that we just kept getting better every single day. I didn't think about the league till probably when I got home and had a great discussion with my mom, my dad, and a couple of people who decided to call me too. And, uh, and you know, I, me and uh, Jeff had a great conversation and he, he's, he just basically just told me that he was going to push me every day to try to make a run and try to make a run in the NBA. So hopefully that um, can be, hopefully that can, basically happy. My last one, if you were drafted, you'd be the fourth Creighton player since 2014 to be selected in the NBA draft. How can you explain the program's consistency of churning out NBA ready talent? Uh, pretty much what I can say, we have a great system at Creighton. Uh, we, we play hard. We, we have great conditioning. We have one of the best, probably the top best, uh, weightlifting uh, coaches and probably in basketball, in my opinion. And, you know, us, we're, we're, we call ourselves a family and we push ourselves every single day on and off the court. And 
no matter what, like we we always find a way to get things happen, get things done. Congrats, man. Right, next, next we'll go to KTV, uh, Matt Lothrop. Hey, Tyshawn, um, what do you do in the next uh, six, eight weeks to solidify your spot as maybe a, a mid-second round guy or at least solidify your spot as a draft draft player? Wait, say that again? My what phone do you, will cut out. I, I guess – you, there's going to be limited exposure because of everything being shut down. How do you go about, um, I guess, kind of solidifying uh, who you are? Do, are you sending out tape to people do, or do you kind of rely on what you've shown the last three years at Creighton? How does that kind of work itself out in terms of getting to people to know who you are? Uh, basically, like, uh, I don't know much about the rules. I don't know whether or not we can send tape out or not, but, uh, as of like right now, I was basically just hoping that everybody could see the way that I was playing uh, offensively and defensively and trying to push my guys to being a leader um, on the court. Uh, just basically uh, throughout my junior and sophomore year of how big of a jump that I made. We'll stay with KTV and Matt Foster if Matt Foster's got a question. Yeah, hey, Tyshawn, um, by any chance have you – spoken to to former Jays teammates that have gone through this draft process and kind of their advice of what to expect I know the circumstances are different than what they went through but have they kind of given you any information have you tried to pick their brain as to what to expect going through this process uh as far as right now I haven't yet uh I'm a potentially probably reaching out to Kyrie and maybe Doug and uh probably me I know uh Justin he really I Justin texts me every now and then, so uh, I'm like I'm gonna try to reach out to a bunch of guys that have already went through this process, and so I can get ready for what I need to work on, especially just uh, being in shape. I know it's probably the biggest one that I need to keep pushing myself in because you never know, like all this can end, and I may have to go join, I may have to go fly out and. Uh, do some stuff with a team, and if I'm not in shape, then they're pretty much not going to pick me. So I know the one number one thing right now is just being in shape. All right, we'll do uh, – I think everybody's had at least one question. I think we'll, we'll go right, right through it one more time. Just If you don't have anything, just say pass. Uh, Rex Smith? Yeah, Tyshawn, uh, just talk a little bit about if this, uh, you know, is it for you at Creighton, what your time here has meant to you personally, the, the fans, uh, the city of Omaha, what, what that's meant to you. Uh, we, I think we had one of the best fans, uh, in college basketball. Uh, everybody at Creighton is loyal. We respect each other and, you know, I'm, I'm just going to miss it. Like being in college at Creighton was a, a tremendous opportunity for me to have. Like it's, I've grown up as a person, I've grown up as a player and I can say like, uh, I'm, I'm a part of the family of, uh, being a Blue Jay. Tim Kruger? Hey, Tyshawn, uh, just something to piggyback off of what you just said. What At what point do, uh, you know, when you talked to, uh, earlier, you talked a little bit about, you know, yeah, perhaps, you know, uh, overseas would be an option for you if things didn't work out in the draft and so forth. How, how do you, I mean, I know there's a lot of things you haven't thought through yet, but how do you weigh that with what you just said about the love of the team, the love of playing Creighton, uh, the chance to have a big run next year, how are you going to weigh all that out? Uh, I honestly don't know. Like, all I know is, like, when it, it's going to hurt, uh, especially just leaving, like, my guys and leaving the coaches and just honest, – I honestly don't know. I just know that it's just going to hurt real bad. Just leaving a great – just leaving a great community, a great set of guys that we had, our coaches and all, and – like, I just, I honestly don't know. Andy Kendi? Hi, Sean. Um, it, do you look at this as a win-win situation in terms of your situation, or is your mind made up? I, I, I get the sense that you're definitely leaning towards the draft, period. Uh, as of right now, like, I was – I'm pretty much, like, like uh, leaning towards the draft, but um, – like, in my sake, like, Coach Mack told me, like, he still has one more scholarship and he's going to hold it for a while right now and, until, like, some of the stuff uh, 
until I make my final decision. So uh, I just know, like, it's like if I have an opportunity to go back, it's going to be amazing. And if I don't have a, if I just made my mind and I don't have an opportunity and I pretty much won't go back, then it's still going to be amazing. I'm going to miss everybody, but it's in both sides. I was, I'm just going to have to put in all the work in. Jamal Horton. Uh, Tyshawn, um, there have been some pretty good basketball players come uh, through Cabarrus County uh, back in your days, maybe some guys like D. Boss or a little bit before you to current guys like Leaky Black at North Carolina, Wendell Moore at Duke. Um, but no one has been drafted uh, in the NBA who's come through Cabarrus County basketball. What, did, what would it mean to you to be the first uh, Cabarrus County player to be chosen in the NBA draft? You know, it, it'll mean a lot because especially uh, going back and watching some of the games or watching D-Boss and uh, Connor and a lot of guys playing in that gym at Concord, like I was I was looking for the opportunity of shining in their shoes so I can carry on a legacy there at Concord. So it will especially leave a it, – it'll have – I'll be loved and just happy to be like the first one to – come out but I know deep down in me uh that I originally wasn't the first one um I still give credit to everybody that came uh that played in Cabarrus County and also went to school and did what they have to do so I know deep down in me like I I know to myself that I won't be the first one but it it'll still mean a blessing to be a part of that legacy yeah, thank you John Neatow yeah uh touch on man I just have you wrapped your mind around all this? Or have you wrapped your mind around all this? I mean, we're talking about you potentially going pro. Yeah. I know it's a dream. Uh, just like these last couple of weeks, what is? What have you been thinking about? Like, is uh, can you? Do you feel like you're on the on the precipice of doing something that you've always dreamed of? Uh, you know, it's it's pretty much it's a blessing to have, and uh, I haven't really even kept even thinking about making the decision to go to the league or not. Like, I just like I basically like just been saying like I honestly just kept getting my focus on playing basketball at this moment. Okay. Jake Russo. I got nothing. Everyone's had some great questions. Okay. Matt DeMarinis. Uh I guess going back to something you said before about if you sign with an NCAA certified agent that you feel like that would be 70-30 in favor of returning. How do you how do you make that decision? Like what goes into the information you'll need in order to decide whether you're signing with the agent that means you're gone or the signing with the agent that potentially in probability sake means you're coming back? Well, as far as I know, like being with a certified agent, like I have potential of going back to school and especially if I, if I need to go back to school, uh, it's, Oh, uh, hold on. Did you kill your battery? Okay. Can why, you guys why don't you start your, yeah, start your answer over again or start the question right. again. How about? Start the question again? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned uh, that if you sign with an NCAA certified agent, that likely means you're 70 30 in favor of returning to Creighton versus signing with one that obviously means you're staying in the pro ranks. How do you? what information would you need to make the decision in terms of just choosing the agent that would lead you down the path that a either means you're a professional basketball player or B likely leads you back to Omaha? Uh, as far as I know right now, like I've, I have to have like a lot of discussions with my, my family and uh, having a lot of information about whether or not it is a good opportunity for me to go back to school. Uh, I just know, um, whether or not if I do or I don't, I'm still going to uh, basically just get better and have to work on a lot of things uh, that people in the NBA may tell me that I need to work on. And that's what I'm going to have to do because, like, being in the NBA has always been a dream come true for me. And, you know, uh, if I do get a chance to go back to school, it would be amazing. And, uh, you know, it's honestly, that's, yeah. How, how enticing is the, I don't know, all the way too early off-season hype you guys have been getting so far? How enticing is that to to come back? Like, I can see you're already smiling just thinking about it, but yeah. what, is, 
when, when you see the well, where everybody thinks of your team so far and what you guys have coming back, how enticing is that? How much is that pulling you in the other direction? Uh, you know, it's I guess it'd be the first time I think maybe would it be the first time in Creighton that we'll be a top five team? Yes. And so, uh, you know, being a part of that will probably be the best thing ever. And especially the group of guys that we have coming in and like we'll have Jacob back, we'll have two two more bigs as well. And then we'll get Antoine to come up and make a big jump. And like, especially when we have everybody to push uh, ourselves to get better. We have a bunch of group, a bunch of guys that we know where we can all play the game and we know our system at Creighton. And when you, when you get a whole bunch of hype and cause I, I just think when we get credit like that, because the way that we played this year, mm-hmm. uh, we would probably wouldn't have got none of that credit if we didn't uh, play the way that we did this year. All right. Uh, we'll go to John Bishop next. First off, Tyshawn, do, uh, do we need to call AAA if you need to uh, jump your car? Do you know how to jump oh, your nah. car? Oh, no. I'm all good. I, okay. My, yeah, I'm all good on that one. Okay. Um, uh, real quick technical question. You have until early June, right, before yes. you absolutely have to make your right decision, correct? Yes. Have you talked to Mac about um, a different timeline? In other words, is he giving you – I'd like to know by the end of May or I'd like to know by a certain date, or is he comfortable with waiting until the very end if that's when you need to make your final decision? Uh, I think me and Mac had a discussion on whether or, not, uh, or whether he wants to know probably sometime in May. Right. Is there, a, uh, is there a, p- a specific part of May, like middle of May? Honestly, as far as I remember, I'm pretty sure it's just in May. I don't know if it's in the first, the middle, or end. Like I, I, he ended up calling me while I was in my workout, and I'm I gotta call him back as soon as I get off of this. Well, uh, just just a couple left. Uh, John Fanta. Yeah, Ty Sean, I just uh, am interested to to know uh, who you think uh, or who you watch a lot in the NBA uh, that you think you you strive to be like in the league right now. Uh. I watched a lot of Devin Booker highlights and like the way that he uh, made a jump when he left Kentucky and decided to join the NBA, which he, he's an amazing player. And like, I, I tried my hardest to watch his game, watch some of his live highlights before we played games, even when we was on the road or even before a game, I like pull up his highlights, but, and, and, like, that was basically, like, all the offensive stuff and what he did. But I tried to also watch a lot of defensive stuff in the mindset of, like, Paul George because he was a two-way player. And like, he did things defensively to win games, and he also did offensively to win games. And, like, I wanted to be that guy to, uh, to defend the ball and also be able to score the ball as well. Matt Lothrop with Channel 7. Hey, Ty, Sean, what would it take for you to come back to Creighton? <laughs> That's a good question. Honestly, I don't, I don't know. Like, I just know, like, uh, as far as, like, a lot of information from the NBA, uh, whether or not if it's a good idea for me to come back uh, to school or would it be a better opportunity for me just to uh, play in the NBA. Matt Foster? Tyshawn, I know you mentioned you're going to work your hardest just so you can be prepared either way. Are there specific drills or parts of your game that you're trying to perfect in these next coming weeks just while you have this time? I'm doing a lot of ball handling drills because um, I know, like, I need to work on my handle a lot. And um, I'm doing a lot of ball handling drills, getting up a lot of shots, especially, like, being at Crane, like, everybody knows we can shoot the ball, but – I still got to make sure, like, I still get a lot of shots in. Uh, but the main thing that I'm working on a lot right now is my ball handling. And then, Ty, before we wrap up, I just – I had a, one person text me that just wanted to follow up to clarify something, that the 70-30 answer you gave in regards to the agent or whether or not they're certified, can you, can you just kind of clarify what you meant by that? So, I, uh, like, a 70-30% chance of me going back to school. 70% going back to school Yeah. with which kind of agent? Uh, a certified. Okay. All right. Well, 
Tyshawn, certainly want to thank you for uh, for your time. We wish you nothing but the best moving forward and continued good health to you and your family. Thanks, everybody, thank for joining much. us tonight. Thanks, thank, thank you. Thank you, Tyshawn. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yep. Thanks.